the other's work. Back into the stream. Either we are already live or uh, or or not. Let's see. Petra, I'm going to check uh, if I'm live. <laughs> please, please, that would be awesome. We are. No, that that doesn't look like live. Yeah, exactly. We are already live. That's amazing. Okay, so we are live. Everybody is live. Everybody is. All of you guys say hello. Fantastic, fantastic. So, all right, all right. This is now the 24th edition of this Meetup series. The first speaker to come here is Hendrik Lennart, and he happens to be the 24th as well, to close those two years off. So thank you all for coming, and give Hendrik a warm welcome. <laughs> we, got, we got guests from, from, from Australia, from Spain. Who else is coming not from Germany? Like, where you guys come from? Scotland. Where are you from? Bonn. Uh, oh, Iran. Yeah. So I heard there are even people from, from what, what's your hood? Hendrik, what's your hood called? Köln Bayenthal. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming so far. Uh, on, on the day before Carnival, yeah, I expected like 20 people to come here, but I'm glad to see like some 40, 50 ish people. All right. So today we're going to dig into growth is a process with Hendrik. Um, like, who, for who is this the first time at this meetup? Uh, amazing. Okay, then let me just say I'm Ben. I'm uh, the host of the Pirate Skills Meetup. I started exactly 24 months ago with this. I'm a founder myself since 2008. While I was studying psychology, I just couldn't, couldn't stop since then. And uh, I nowadays call myself a growth marketer because I'm most passionate about the business building part where it's about user acquisition, user engagement, and turning visitors into revenues. And I'm also a proud dad of two girls. We just had a party last Saturday with 56 people for my three-year-old girl. Uh, <laughs> that was amazing. Some parents told me, no, there's this rule in Germany that you can only invite as many friends as you're old. And yeah, that, that wouldn't have been as much fun, right? You were there, Anne? That was cool. That was fun. Lots of cake and party until seven. Until seven, that was amazing. <laughs> uh, so guys, you saw the, the live stream is already running on Facebook. Uh, you're very welcome to take pictures, tag us on at Pirate Skills on the Instagrams. Please share the awesome stream that really helps to get the message out and to invite more people and to fill our mission of like giving entrepreneurs a better fighting chance. So thank you very much for that. If you care about the slides for today, uh, we don't have a handout today, but we got amazing links. Getpirateskills.com slash process. Yeah, this uh, is also written up here. Very sneaky within the workshop announcement. Amazing move over there. So if you go there, you can uh, you go to SlideShare, you can get all the slides uh, from, from Hendrik uh, wrapped within the usual Pirate Skills frame. And uh, I, I hope you, you love that. So today, we're going to talk about growth is a what? A, a process. Um, like after like four weeks after we introduced that title, I think we both said like that, that, that sounds a bit lame. <laughs> and we thought like Hendrik and I, we, we know each other now since three, year, three years, I guess, uh, or, or at least those two years uh, when he was there. And uh, I worked with him uh, while he was still at Trusted Shots. Um, he, uh, he has built Trusted Shots in the last 12 years um, with a team of 61 people. He managed developers, marketers, product people, and has, has really, he has this growth is my North Star mindset, yeah, across the team, across the product. And I, I really appreciate his perspective there. And uh, since since when did you switch to freedom? 
last year, 10 months ago, she said, like, I, I need to do my own stuff again. I want to do um, my version of growth hacking, not bound by one specific company, but helping lots of companies uh, to achieve that growth. And within this time, he has um, figured out stuff that works across projects. Yeah, And I've, I've seen his way to work, and I'm really excited to see uh, Hendrik's top five uh, growth hacks today. Uh, I think he's the only guy I would use the word growth hack for. <laughs> and uh, he really deserves it. It will, it will continue. It will continue. All right. So um, with, yeah, no further ado, let's welcome Hendrik Lennart. All right, enjoy the mic. We have to share a mic. This will be difficult because we're going to be engaging. That will be funny. Okay, I share. You listen. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, thanks, Ben, for this uh, warm introduction. And I'm really happy to be here after yeah, 24 months, is it right? Yep, 24 months. Wow, that's awesome. I was the first, and I've I will show you a screenshot from his mail, how, to, how he tried to, to win me for the first meetup. It's oh. a surprise for you. Oh. But now it's no surprise anymore. So what I want to do today is that we have a little bit fun. Yeah, that's really important because growth hacking is something about fun. And I built up a, a brand new presentation. So I prepared it yesterday in the plane. So I came from, from my holiday. Maybe you can see it because I, I'm pretty sure I have to answer it later on. And I had 10 hours on the plane and that was the idea. Okay, we have to build something new. And you are the first first people um, who, who can see it. That's a good thing. So what is growth hacking? Here, sorry for, for the, red, uh, uh, the red letters here on, the, on this slide because I think it's really hard to see. Maybe online it's a little bit better. On the left side, that's the story of the presentation and because of, of the reason that it's pretty new, I have no idea how to call it. Yeah? So there's version A on the left side and that's my, my favor, which is ticking in my heart. Yeah? So I want to, to, uh, to name it like this. Why hacking is a one and only growth hack in growth hacking. That's my favorite title for this kind of presentation. Okay? I will tell you why. Version B maybe is a little bit more simple. My top five growth hacks validated by 70 plus growth hacking coaching sessions. So, who likes version number A more? That are five, six people. Number, or oh, version number B? Always the same. You, you know this thing, that you have something in your mind and you want to, 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 express, uh, to express what, what you have here in your mind or your story? And then there comes something, so it's English, but then there comes a German sentence. It's so complicated, and the only one who knows what I want to say is myself. <laughs> yeah? And all the other guys, you or my audience in Facebook or wherever, it's much more simple. So thank you for this small survey, because now I know I have to, to name it maybe like on the, on the right side. Okay, what I want to do today with you is not something like I give you some sneak growth hacks or the best Facebook marketing hack, how to cheat, cheat your audience or the SEO hack or the Instagram hack or everything else what we saw the 23 uh, meetups before. Today it's something like, I think it will be more a little bit of strategy. Yeah? And I met in the last 11 months, thank you, Manuel, for this correction, for the 10th month where I live in freedom now, it's 11 months. And um, I think I made up to 70 growth hacking coaching sessions, workshops, boot camps, one-to-one uh, -one coachings, and so on. And you have always this sneaky, sneaky growth hacks in your mind. And everybody is looking for this. But what I learned in these coaching sessions is always the same. There are so many mistakes we can do, and they are so easy, and they are just based on a lot of experience. So there's just one idea. Maybe you know this book, but there are so many books where the people are talking about ideas. Everybody of us has ideas. 
good ideas, bad ideas, many ideas. And as you can imagine, there are corporates in this world where everybody's laughing about. Yeah, they have ideas as well. Maybe not the best ideas, yeah, but they have ideas. So some there are some people they say ideas are the currency of the 21st century. Do you know this? Would you agree? No? Why not? Ideas. Everybody has ideas. Yeah? I have so many ideas, I have no idea what to do with them. And they make me disappointed. Because most of the ideas, I don't have the time or the skills or the money or whatever to execute them. And that's a big problem for myself. When I started last March to be or to build up my own company, I heard something about design thinking. Have you heard about this? Who knows what it is? Who had the chance to took part in a design thinking workshop? So I heard about this, and I said, okay, design thinking, okay, it is for, it's a process for getting ideas. I really, I have no ideas why we need a process for getting ideas. Because I, I'm full of ideas all the time. They make me stuck. Yeah? And then I took part in a design thinking workshop in Düsseldorf. Yeah? It has nothing to do with the story, but it was in Düsseldorf. Yeah? <laughs> Shit happened. I had to go there by car. It was a horror. Okay, I did it. And there were some, some, uh, some people from Henkel, so a big corporate. Yeah? And after one hour, I realized why they need why need why they need why they need this kind of process to get ideas because they are not allowed to get ideas they are working in a corporate and they're really stiff and they can't move and they, everybody is working in a in this department and so on yeah so ideas is really really important some ideas last year i think it was a uh, 8 uh, december and I was on the way early in the morning to my gross hacking boot camp in Hamburg. It was really early, it was the weather was horrible, and I had four and a half hours sitting in the train, in the ICE. And then I saw that there was a crypto thing. Yeah? Who of you has invested until yesterday in Bitcoin? Or something different, some cryptocurrency? Yeah? But everybody knows what it is, yeah? Okay. So always when there comes some new technologies or something comes up, I hate it and I hate it even more when, when I'm, for myself, I'm not able to explain it easy to anybody else, to my wife, to my mom, maybe, yeah, I hate it. And the, the, the whole blockchain thing, the whole cryptocurrency thing, what it is about. Who has really an idea what the blockchain thing is? Where is the API? Where is the endpoint I can call with my PHP script to get a blockchain thing? To put my MySQL database <laughs> in the blockchain? Who has an idea? Yeah? So, and there was an idea. I said, okay, there's Christmas is coming up. It was the 8th of December. And I said, yeah, I would love to, to, to give all the people who are searching for, I want to buy Bitcoin. And maybe there are 80% of you, I would guess, <laughs> who Googled already. I want to buy in Bitcoin. I said, okay, a good idea could be, business idea could be to, 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 to build something like a Christmas present, yeah? Like an Amazon gift card, but with a Bitcoin wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet, and I put 20 euros on it. Okay, that was my business idea in the train, and I had four hours of time. And then I said, okay, I chose blockchain.info because they have an open API, because in the end I want to automate it. And then I said, okay, I scribbled down the process in my notebook. And I said, okay, I do it for my wife. Maybe there was a first mistake. Because my wife, that's not a good Christmas present for her, okay? So <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> I know. But she's at work <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. And so I said, okay, I bought the domain because I'm really addicted to domains. I bought the domain cryptogift.de. And I built it. I made a new wallet for her, yeah, with a with the wallet ID, with the login, the password, and so on. And that's uh, the typical certificate you got from the Mac, the template from the Mac pages, whatever. And then I built it. Okay, so it was maybe an hour, maybe half an hour. And then I said, okay, twenty euros. 
to have something because an empty crypto wallet, nothing, right? And I said, okay, I, I, go, I went to my Coinbase wallet and wanted to, to make a transaction from, from 20 euro from my wallet to this one. And I did it. What do you think what happened in the second where I did it? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> it dropped. Okay. Something different? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. First problem was it took two days for the transaction. That's not my personal expectation of a new currency for the world. Yeah. Was it problem number one? Problem number two? It cost me, I think, sev exactly 70 euros for the transaction. So I said, okay, let's start a little business here for now. And then I closed it. Okay, that was an idea. And I executed the idea for myself without paying so much money. I had time. Done. Next one. As I promised, Ben Sofiani wrote me a mail on 25th February <laughs> 2016. Sorry, it's in German. Hi, Hendrik. Können wir vielleicht mal kurz wegen dem möglichen Traction and Growth Meetup Talk telefonieren? Ich weiß nicht, wie du mit dem Kung bla 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 bla. And that's the story. And I would say applause for Ben because it's a real growth story. 24 Growth Meetups. I love it. I love it. Applause, please, for Ben. <laughs> because, because what I learned in terms of content marketing, blogging, YouTubing, and all the stuff is you have to do it regularly. And I would say most of the people do one blog post, two blog posts, one YouTube video, the second YouTube video, and then they stop. They stop because they didn't earn any coin for it. But you have to do it regularly. Let's applaud that. Can I get an amen? Okay? So thank you very much for this one because for this region, for the Rhineland Valley or whatever, it's a really, I think it's the best meetup. And I'm not here by person, but I'm always online and you know it. <laughs> I'm always online and asking questions because I'm sitting with my, with my daughter on the couch and I'm being online because I'm, I think it's really important. So it's an idea. And he executed the idea. He executed it. And then he keeps going. That's really important. Yeah. Another one. A-B testing. Who has no idea what A-B testing is? Okay. A-B testing, just to explain, there were two or three hands. A-B testing is something where you can say there's a website and there's a technology and you can say, okay, 50 percent, that's the easiest way I know all the main details. You can say 50 people, 50% uh, of the people, of the visitors of the website becomes uh, or get this kind of version of the headline and the other 50 people, 50% uh, 50 get this one. And then you can check which one is working better. Yeah, that's an A-B test. And I hear so many ideas for A-B test. And do you know what is always the first one? Let's test the button color. And really, that's not a good idea. I can't hear it anymore. And when I build up a new landing page, the first thing I have in my mind is always, oh, I could do a green button color maybe, because I am that stupid as well. Yeah. So A-B testing, there are so many ideas, but don't start with button colors. Yeah. There's no difference between this one, apply now or submit or apply now for free. If it, there's no difference from my point of view if it is red or green. Instead, the call to action, so the sentence, what is written there, there's always a big, big difference between apply now or apply now for free. If you have a free offer, please write it down or test it. Test it, but write it down and then test it. Yeah? Just to give you some ideas. So don't do it. If you are at the position that you start testing your button colors, I think you should have tested this everything before. Your headlines, your images, your call to actions, your value propositions, your trust elements, your payment providers, your price, your business model, and whatever. There's much more value in than testing the button color, okay? Yeah. Uh, like you were all part of an A-B test when, when you got invited uh, to this meetup. Uh, at least the people who have been here for the second time. Who has been here for, for the second time at least? Yeah. So you guys probably got an email via intercom, right? 
uh, that looked a bit more personal in the Pirate Skills brand. And there was an A-B test in it um, that, I, that I keep on running. Uh, for example, the what do I write in the call to actions? Yeah, I have red call to action because that's my brand color and I wouldn't test the color of that because it converts better. Uh, but you you guys react to this word free. I, you know the e meetup is for free, most people do, um, especially the people who have already been there. But the, the click through rate, when I write free into the button, is like 35% higher, yeah? Just because I say go to the free ticket, yeah, in contrast to um, go to, uh, get a ticket, yeah. So it, it sounds super stupid, but the the content and especially like the order in in which you present the call to actions, they make a much more meaningful meaningful impact because you guys don't scroll down. If I put down more than three links, there are no more clicks down there on on, on those links. So I can A/B test the content as well as the messaging. Uh, in, in the stuff you get. So uh, I, I hope that was an example. Yeah, good validation of the idea. It's always stupid. Your customers are stupid. So and we are, we are customers as well, so we are stupid too, okay? So I think you got that idea. Next one. That is a gross hack I have on my list I want to do tomorrow. And I promise you I will do it tomorrow. I read it anywhere. And it's, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I'm, I'm I want to hear if you know it before or if you did it already. AdWords, you know what AdWords is. Google AdWords, you, you can buy keywords. Yeah, You buy your top keyword and it goes to your one special landing page for this kind of key keyword. And there, there's one Facebook pixel integrated. So you know exactly in this Facebook pixel come all only the people who really look Googled for this kind of keyword. And then you go to Facebook and make a lookalike audience exactly on this one. Did you know this before? Yeah, really? Okay, great. Who doesn't know? So I love it because for selling my bootcamp tickets and everything, it's you can cheat Google AdWords. Because Google AdWords, I think my experience is for most of the keywords is much more expensive than Facebook ads. And can can grab them there, and then I can do a Facebook lookalike audience. And I don't want to explain today what a lookalike audience is. That's maybe something for an online course or something. But that's an idea. That's an idea what is on my list, and I will do tomorrow. Yeah, just to give you some stupid ideas. And I would say a lot of people are expecting when you're writing a blog post about gross hacking or you make a smart presentation on a conference, and the people are always expecting the best gross hack. But I think there is no good presentation where you, I can sell the top five gross hacks or the top ten gross hacks because there's always a big difference between e-commerce, do you have an app, do you have a software as a service thing or whatever. What, what, what kind of gross hacks can I tell you? Yeah, and That's always where I say, please go to Google and Google for gross hacks. <laughs> yeah? Or go to something like grosshackers.com. Who knows grosshackers.com? The other 80%, please go to growthhackers.com. There you find, I think it's more than 70,000 good categorized, curated gross hacks. I think until the end of your life, you find their gross hacks. And please take it, make a curation by yourself. And that's where I'm looking for gross hacks when th I have no ideas anymore by myself. Okay? That was the idea part. Then, it was an idea to make it today. I have no idea if it works. I want to test you your own execution speed. So, what do you want to know? Who loves version A? Right, thank you. Okay, just one idea more. There's version A, there's version B, and there's version C. Has anybody a clue what it could be? Sorry? A Trello board, thank you. Or a Kanban thing, yeah? Who has an idea what was Kanban is? Who worked with Kanban? A Kanban. Okay, who does not? Okay, Kanban is a special pro agile project management method, yeah, where you just put 
ideas in the left column, ideas. And then when you start the day or the week or your next development period or whatever, you take the best idea from ideas to in progress. And when you have done it, you push it in done. Really easy. I love Kanban and I love Trello. Yeah. And what I always say is, it's down below, sorry. This version A is the way corporate, if they would have Trello boards, yeah, or would be allowed to use it in Germany, it would be like this. They have no ideas. There's just a little bit in progress, and they have just a little bit done. Then version B would be, that's what I say, that's a real growth hacking spirit. We have so many ideas. We are focusing on the right things, what we are doing this week maybe, or this development period. And then in the end, we have a lot of things, ideas done. And then here, that's a typical startup or small, medium businesses thing, where you say, we have so many ideas. So I used to work 10 years for Trusted Jobs. Have you an idea what it is? Who knows Trusted Jobs? Okay. Yeah, a great company and great growth rates and everything is perfect. But we had all so many ideas and you have no idea which one we should do next. We have to prioritize all the time about the IT resources, about the marketing resources. And so we, we are doing, we are not focusing, we are doing too many things in the same time. And that means in the end we are not doing the right things. Yeah? So my, my approach is fill up your idea column in Kanban, s as many ideas as you can do, focus on the right things, and in the end you will have so many executed ideas. Okay? But ideas, there are a lot of people who say, okay, we have so many, so many books. I, I met a guy in Hamburg on a boot camp, he said, I read a book a day. I said, well, when, when do you do it? <laughs> One bo a book a day? I said, okay, I, I think that's not the right spirit, yeah, because just get getting ideas or learning is not the right thing. You have to learn all the time, but I would say, if he would say, I read a book, and the best idea from the book I executed, I execute the day after. I would say that's perfect. Yeah. So just get the ideas where you want, but start executing. Yeah. Because not ideas are, from my point of view, um, is a new goal or whatever some people say, but just executed ideas. Start executing your ideas. And I can't say it more often than today, but you have to execute. There are so many people here in Startplatz, they are meeting at the coffee machine, they are going to the meetups and they get ideas and then they make a good content to the pirate skills meetup and say, wow, great ideas today. And when they, when we send a follow up email next Wednesday, we say, what of which of the ideas did you execute? There always comes, no, oh, sorry, I had no time. Always like that. Yeah, that's, that's not the right idea. So that's my growth hacking process. I don't want to tell you today, but there are just two things in it. That's a process. You have to think about the product. You have to think about the business model. You have to think about the growth marketing thing. That's ben, Ben's duty. And in the end, you have to execute. There is something about the team. You need the right skills. You need agility, the right tools, and so on and so on. Yeah? And growth hacking has something to do with execution. And that's so important. So, and I did more than 70 coaching sessions for growth hacking the last 11 months. And I want to give you my top five growth hacks. And it's not something sneaky, if you expect it. My top five growth hacks I heard the last 11 months. Number one, find out what customer needs. <laughs> Sorry for that, but you're laughing, but we can take your example and to, to have a look if you have an idea what your customer needs. Do you know this thing? The customer desire map. I got it the first time from a sales coach, Dirk Kreuter. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, w I, had a presenta I saw a presentation and he put out the customer desire map. Customer desire map. It's for sales, it's for marketing. And I think in my presentations, it's the most photographed slide because it's the most important. We'll see. 
Thank you, Ben. I made the call to action and you'd sneak it. <laughs> <laughs> so first level, first dimension is hopes and dreams. Think about your customer. Anyway, what you're doing or what you're selling. Everybody of us has hopes and dreams, depending of your age, of your life situation, if you're a salesman, if you're a marketing man, if you are whatever, a developer, or a growth marketer, or an intern, or whatever. Everybody of us has hopes and dreams. Think of what is your, what are the hopes and dreams of your customers? Then, I think much more easy, pains and fears. My customer, think of your customer. What is the pain and the fear? What is the pain of, an, of a CTO? Do you know what a CTO is? So the technical, technical responsible man in a SME company. What is his pain and fear? Maybe. Great one. Server doesn't scale on Christmas. Could be e-commerce, huh? E-commerce. There's a lot of traffic coming in. You have no idea how much traffic. The marketing department is doing a great job for Christmas. And the pain and fear you have is, oh, our servers, we don't have anything on the Amazon cloud because it's too expensive. And I fear the migration project from our old legacy system to this new one and something like this. That's something you have to know if you want to talk or to sell something to CTOs. Yeah, that's important. And then in the end, there are barriers and un really difficult to, exp uh, to, to spell uncertainties. Yeah? There are something which, which holds me back from reaching my goals. Something, there are some barriers. Yeah? So for every ad, for every call, for every email you do to your customers, please, from now on, take this customer design and print it out and pin it on your, <laughs> on your desk or whatever. Think about the customer desire map. If you do your Facebook ads or what you do in this, in this thing, in this table, it, would, it, will, be, it will convert better be because there are always pains and fears. I had a lot of workshops to insurances because here in Cologne there's insurance, comp uh, insurance world, yeah? And I say, okay, why don't you play with pains and fears? Because insurance, all of, all of us has just, th there's just one reason why we have, why we pay so much money for insurances is because we have pain and fears. We have fear that something could happen with my family for life insurance or with my car or whatever, with my household or my, my bike or my mobile or whatever. Yeah, the ju and they say, no, our marketing, de marketing, de marketing department doesn't allow us to play with fears. And I say, what? sense yeah okay what customer needs yeah sure so, uh, so this cannot be overstated how important this first growth hack is so Anne and I uh, we were churning out ideas uh, with the team on like two landing pages per week level yeah and uh, the difference it makes if an idea has an actual customer with hopes and desires and pains and fears and obstacles to overcome, that was, I would say, like one of the primary things. And to give you an example, that, that's, that doesn't have to be like curing cancer type of pains, yeah? Uh, Anna and I, we have an app called CSGO Skills. Uh, it helps you to become a better Counter-Strike player, like video game improvement, yeah? Those guys spend four, six, eight hours uh, on that game with that passion and it's, it's either you get shot or you shoot the other guy. Yeah, it's completely in your mind, 100% virtual, but the amount of, of dreams and hopes the media is building around uh, uh, like eSports, uh, it's like, it's unimaginable what's, what's happening in the mind. We had at Gamescom, people coming to our office upstairs here at Startplatz were saying sentences like, gaming is my life, much more important than family, blah, blah, blah. Do not, like, this is, this is what madness, of course, yeah? Um, but I just wanna show you, like, this, it doesn't have to be real, it just has to be real in the heart and the mind uh, of the customer, yeah? And 
pains and fears. What kinds of pains and fears could you expect from it from from esports? Yeah, the fear of losing the next round, of being the weakest link in your team. Yeah, and the barrier, the the amount of practice you actually have to put in to become better, because everybody is playing four to eight hours per day. Try to compete in that uh, environment. And to then provide like training plans to make it easier, um, semi-professional advice, that, that was a real thing. But we had so many app ideas and most of them just sucked, yeah? And we had an app that, was, that went pretty well actually called uh, Exitus, which <laughs> measured your, uh, uh, the day of your death like pr uh, based on some data sources, when you answer a survey, it predicted that, and you had this big countdown going on, <laughs> yeah? It's a reminder. It was a reminder, <laughs> like, <sighs> it's, uh, did, is it still online, Anna? Yeah. Is Exodus, I, th I think, I think I have the dev version still on my phone. You can try it later. <laughs> and, uh, but you have to pay to get the additional survey question to get a more precise date. That kind of worked, but that was too abstract of hopes and fears. It's nothing people think about on a daily basis. So this sounds like this is not a growth hack. This is the true growth hack, yeah? And maybe there are some technical um, ways and, and, and tactics that help you show that pain, that fear, that hope to many people. Yes, yeah? But if there is no substance behind the, the megaphone, the messaging, uh, it, it all sucks. So thank you for making that for your for your number one. Yeah. Number one. And always comes the question: Okay, what 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 can I do with what what can I do with this now? Where you say, please check your website, check your Facebook ad, whatever you go out to your customer with, and put your value proposition on it. In all boot camps I I did, there was always eighty percent of the people who said, okay, I have to write it down. Okay, let's have a look at your website, and then we wrote it on the we we. We painted it on the wall and said, okay, where is the value proposition? You were laughing because it was boring. It was a boring idea. No, where is the value proposition? What makes you special? What is the difference to the customers? Where is the customer need? Yeah, yeah, really. Thank you. It depends. If you're doing a funnel, I would try it out. There are the first ad in the awareness thing and the top of the funnel would be maybe the pain, the second one would be the fear, the third one would be the hopes and dreams. I think it depends. Yeah, it, and it depends on your branding. Insurances to, pay, uh, to play always with pains and fears, I think it would be a little bit hard at any time. Yeah, but I think you have to, to, to try it out. I think the second part of the funnel is always this. You got the point that there, I meet you with my first ad, I met your your pain maybe, and the second one, I have to show you how I can give it to you, how, how, how I can solve the problem for you, for the CTO making security audit or whatever. Yeah, could be in the B2B funnel. Yeah. yeah sure, depends on the customer group, the customer segment. It depends on the customer. You have to know your customer. But what I so we met, we are meeting here in the Startplatz, a lot of startups, and I train them to say, okay, start please with just one target group. There are always a lot of ideas. We could target them, this group and this group and this segment and this. I think what is your typical target group, and please start with this. And you have to build a perfect product, a perfect experience for exactly this group. Yeah. So for sure. But to meet your customer expectations and your customer needs, I think this one is really, really great. And I love it even more than building up personas to, to decide which car the CTO is driving and something. I have no idea what, what, is, it, what is it for to know that he's driving a Mercedes, whatever. Yeah? But I think to, to get his hopes and dreams is even more valuable. Okay? So please check your website and everything you go out to your customer and check out if there is a value proposition on it. And I promise you, you will find a lot of things where it is not. Second one that's really easy for pains and fears, it's Liebscher and Bracht. Has anybody an idea what it is? Yeah, great. 
So that's a um, physio thing against back pain. Everybody of us has, has back pain, though, so good idea. And they are doing YouTube marketing as a hell. They are building every week one YouTube video with good exercises, really in the target group, because it's really easy. Everybody has back pain. Yeah. <laughs> and they are doing a good job because every week they have more than 500,000 views. And then they asked me, Henry, can you help us? And then I said, hmm, I'm not the YouTube guy. I have no idea how to do it. Yeah. But they said, yeah, that's not the problem. The problem is that we don't earn money with these videos. We have no idea how to do it. And then we made the workshop, and then we found out, OK, in thinking in the customer, in the customer needs, there's somebody who has back pain. What does he do next? Do you have an idea? Sorry? Painkillers? OK, later on. Painkillers doesn't work. <laughs> Doctor, good idea. He Googles. Everybody's Googling something medical stuff. Ask my wife. Yeah? So she's at work, so I'm fine. I told her already. So pain, back pain, knee pain, here pain, here pain. I have no idea the words. And then they are doing a really good marketing job, comes all the videos. And then I said, okay, if somebody who watched the video and maybe did the three exercises in this video, what is the next idea? What do you as a business want from him? What could be the next step? And there comes a lot of ideas. Yeah, he wants to buy an online course. Really? That's, that's a person who's watching a YouTube video with back pain exercises the first time by an online course? I have no idea, we have to test it. Anyway, there were a lot of ideas, and in the end we found out we have to bring them, and it's really easy, from here to the website. And on the website you can offer everything, but we have to, the, 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 the mistake always was that they tried to sell anything, to sell online courses, to sell um, black rolls and all the things, and DVDs and everything, but in the first hand. And then we started, okay, we said, okay, give us the email address. And the most of you will laugh about it. They say, yeah, that's not in the door sack. And I tell you, I would say 50% of all businesses in Germany try to sell all the time on Facebook, on the landing pages directly, but nobody knows you. Nobody trusts your service. Nobody has an idea what you do. So please start with at least getting the email address in. That's what they did. And in the end, they have the email address and most of the time, unfortunately, the, the back pain stays. So they have the email addresses and they can send them emails with black rolls, with DVDs, with online courses and everything. And not just for this one second where somebody is watching the video, so maybe for the next four years. Yeah, so don't sell too early. That's a Gary Vaynerchuk idea. This, you always say, jab, jab, right hook. Yeah? I don't like it, so I take this one. One more example for this, that's my boot camps. So I do a boot camp once a month in another city, anywhere, and I sell tickets. And my Facebook funnel for this is really easy, I would say. So first hand, I, I have a look. Who's visiting my website or my Facebook event? Page views. Then second step of the funnel, I can see in the Facebook pixel who clicked add to cart. So what means for me, he liked the event, he liked the value proposition, or, or what I do over there, but there was any reason not to buy a ticket. What could be a reason not to buy a ticket? Too expensive. Good one. No trust. No time on this special date for the meetup. So good idea to make it online. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. So in the end, it's so easy, I, but I know I, I, started, I started with selling. I started to sell the bootcamp tickets with all Facebook ads. You have to go, I'm pretty cool, I do good presentations, I have good workshops and so on, and everybody has to know what gross hacking is. And the real idea is nobody has an idea. So then I had to change the, the thing. First I had to explain what is gross hacking, what's about, what it is not, and th so on, and then that comes in the funnel. And then I can start selling. Just to give you this stupid idea. Yeah? Don't sell too early because nobody trusts you. Nobody knows you. 
Maybe in Cologne, everybody knows us. But where we start in Düsseldorf, nobody knows us. And it's just 400 kilometers. Yeah. So I, I might have mentioned a couple of times the, the example of Klarheit, uh, here, a coaching calendar, a physical book from Cologne. And who, kno who knows that book? OK. Uh, who was on the email, or like who has bought it? Like who was on the email subscriber list before they bought it? Just, just he, he over there. Like most of people have this user experience. They see the ad on Facebook, they get the book for free as PDF. And in the beginning it was like, <gasps> can't give away my product. This is the whole treasure thing. Oh my God. Yeah, but there was no no trust, no relationship yet. It it what what is this Clarhide thing? Yeah, and. So we just send it to them via email. But of course, we asked them, can we opt you into the email newsletter? And they got a series of six emails that provided them more context uh, relevant for them uh, based on their behavior on the website and the emails. And 25% of people that sign up for the newsletter buy the book Yeah, in the end because uh, we're patient over there. And that was such a big difference in, in, in sales numbers after a bit of patience, yeah, that uh, the cost of acquisition like was cut in half after four weeks and even less uh, in, in, in the long term. And whenever Clyde is now launching a new product, they already got 25, 30,000 people lined up interested in their stuff and a quarter of them have already bought. Yeah, That's a fair example of that, right? Yeah, that was, that was a huge, uh, I opened it for me. I didn't know Gary Gary taught that too. I thought he was more like just sell the shit. Yeah, like sell the shit first, get them in, and then talk to everybody. Else. Jab, 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 right, Tog? So any other ideas, learnings from your project where you say, okay, I did it first hand wrong, and then I changed it, and it worked out? No? You are all doing it like this? Who does it? Yeah, what are you doing? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you you bring up a freemium thing in first hand to, to get the, the, the barrier really low and then later on after using the, the stuff you try to sell the original, the expensive version, right? Yeah. So it's so stupid. It is marketing lesson, I would say, number one. And everybody knows what is freemium, what is free trial and all the things and the differences, but we are not using it and we are not testing it. And that's a really easy idea. I have no idea if it is a gross hack or whatever it is. But of 10 people, there are eight people, eight persons who say, no, I don't. I know it, but we didn't try to, <coughs> to test it. No, nobody. Insurance. OK, number three. I love insurance. Yeah. Good customers. <laughs> yeah, they have to do something, because there will be some startups Maybe with blockchain, for example. Okay, number three. There is an app for that. Who of you is able to code, to program stuff? PHP or some great new stuff? So three or four? Yeah. So good news, from my point of view, for the most kind of business models, you don't have to be able to code anymore. It's good and it's perfect. If you can, I can do by myself, still. Not that good as 15 years ago, but I can think, I can rate everything what is programmed, I would say like this. So what you have to do today, and you have to be able to do this, or your team, you have to, to review processes. And if there is a developer in your team, or in freelancer.com or whatever, <laughs> yeah, and he says, okay, your idea is good, but it's not possible. You have to have the feeling if it is right or not. I would say everything is possible today, yeah? First one. And if he says, okay, that costs 10, 10 days, 
you have to have the feeling if it is good or not good. Yeah, you have to, to, to see what is technical possible. And that is a feeling you have to learn. So you don't have to code anymore because there are so many tools. That's just my stupid tool stack for my own small business. It's really stupid. Yeah, there's WordPress, there is some landing page tools, there is Google Analytics, yeah, there is a Facebook Business Manager. I would say 70% of the gross hacking boot camps doesn't use the Facebook Business Manager. They use still the, how is it called? The boost button in their news feed. Yeah, that's, that's not, that, that has nothing to do with gross hacking. Yeah, <laughs> there is uh, Google Suggest. Do you know what Google Suggest is? Who knows? Yeah, you use it every day. And it is called Google Suggest. You use Google, google.com, and then you type in your keyword, and then you make a space, and then comes the suggestions from Google. That is called Google Suggest. And that is not randomly what is Google showing there. They show the real customer needs. So Google is a perfect tool to find out the customer needs and not your ideas, so Google does it. So I love Google Suggest. You have to Google like a pro. It sounds stupid, but you have to do it. Google like a pro. Or that's your stuff, segment.com, intercom, and tools like this. Or Fastbill, to, to write invoices, to automate uh, bookkeeping processes. It sounds so stupid, but if you're a freelancer or building up a company and you need two days a week for writing invoices, it's a good sign that you have to write invoices, yeah? <laughs> but that's not something, is, has not, not something to do with growth on the one hand. So I just want to tell you this. Who knows Typeform? Okay, Typeform. Typeform is a, what is it? <laughs> it is a, it's a, it's a formula scripting tool where everybody of us can build easy forms, yeah? First name, last name, email address, underwear size, whatever you want to know, yeah? And everybody can do it. You don't have to code. Everybody who can code and everybody who built a form in former times, building forms is the most horrible thing you can do. It, it costs time, it is really hard, it is wrong, it's not secure, and it's really hard. Today there's something with type form, and everybody of us can build forms, and you can copy and paste it anywhere where you want. It's always responsive, and it sounds boring maybe, but please use type form. And don't charge your developers or tell them they have to build a form. I want to talk to, to the insurances again in the camera. Yeah? I know that they are not allowed to use type form, but they 80% of their developer times goes building forms. That makes no sense. Yeah? So type form. And then there's one thing, how, do, how it is called? I always pronounce it Zapier? Zapier? Who knows it? Who knows Zapier? Okay, 304, that's a tool, how to explain, where data flows can be proceed. So in former times, if there is a form on your website and every, anybody enters some data, you had to code to decide where, where the data flows. In my inbox, in my CRM system, in HubSpot, in Salesforce, or in my self-made legacy CRM system, whatever. Today there is something, it's a connector. You can go to Sapphire and you can connect your form from your website and from there you can automate sending data to anywhere, to Facebook ads, to Google Drive, to whatever. For, for testing ideas, for testing new ideas, for testing new campaigns and to automate processes, I think it's unbelievable fast. You can build up businesses on this in an hour. Check these tools out because there is a tool, there is an app for everything today. And don't think too much. Just give it a try. Please. Yeah? Okay. Tools. There is an app for that. Then, number four. Stupid as well. Please. And I always think to corporates and personal, whatever, be authentic and be you. I started telling this story, I think, 15 years ago, where I said, okay, I 
I'm registering for for Facebook now, and then the people start, okay, there is a business list and a private list and whatever. I have no idea if it makes sense for myself. I always said, I'm just one person and I'm just one person on Facebook. And I'm, I'm always the same. And I'm always the same in the business field and I'm always the same in the private field. So I make no difference for me. Yeah. So be authentic. I was in Cape Town the last two weeks and there was a beautiful restaurant directly close to the beach in a harbor in a small in a small village and it was called uh, Cape to Cuba Cape to Cuba it was a Cub Cubanian Caribbean bar it was a, it was beautiful and they didn't have a menu they had a small newspaper so an old paper like this everybody got not the menu it got this newspaper and on the front page there was a story from them there was a couple and they used to go in 1999 to Cuba and they told the story. We were in Cuba, we had our holidays, and then we got the Cubanian feeling and so blah, 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 blah. I loved it because it's a story. The restaurant was awesome. The food was not awesome. Yeah? <laughs> but the story was awesome. Here is it. I say, try, and everybody's talking about storytelling. I can't hear the word storytelling. And there are always a lot of products and customers or corporates, they say, yeah, but we don't have a cool story. I say, what? You don't have a cool story? Oh, shame on you. Yeah? Everybody of us has a cool story. Everybody of you has a good idea or have a history, how you, how you got the job or a good project. Or at least when you're only doing bad projects, you can tell about your fuck-ups. Yeah? <laughs> tell your story. And don't tell always the product thing Tell your story. And that's nothing to do with st storytelling. Yeah, there's, be authentic. Be you. There's your picture. There's your sign about uh, under your blog post and not something different. Tell, please tell your own story or the story of your company. Think about Höhle der Löwen. Yeah, there's always question number two or question number three. Yeah, from the, from the jury. They say, okay, okay, how did you get the idea? And that's, I think that's the most interesting part, right? When the people starting to tell their idea, yeah, we were dancing in the club with my girlfriend and then we thought, okay, we need something for high heels, whatever. I don't care, but I love the story. And you do too, I know. So there's always a story, yeah? So really stupid. And then number five. And sorry, I said it was number one, but this is a real my personal number one. Synchronize your work. Who's working in a team? So more than two people. So, okay, so half I would say, yeah? So do you know the idea from Scrum dailies? Who knows dailies? Okay. So the idea is to, to make a small syn synchronization meeting once a day or once a week, or at least once a month, where everybody is talking to each other what we are doing. Because uh, the, the, the gross hacking father, Sean Ellis, yeah, maybe you know him, he says a gross hacker is a person who, whose true north is gross. And you said about myself, there is a gross star. And I would say, I think the biggest challenge in a company is that everything what we are doing, that every person, every campaign, every idea, every product is working in the same direction. And everybody of you has a colleague in your mind where you say, okay, I have no idea what he or she did the last three months, right? And that's a problem. Or where you say, okay, we did a campaign, but I have no idea if there was a real impact or not. Yeah, that is gross, to bring everything in the right direction. And what I say, it comes from the Scrum framework, I say, please start at least maybe with a weekly. How could a weekly work? Maybe you're working in the marketing department with five, six, seven people, okay? And my recommendation is there is a weekly, meet weekly meeting. This weekly meeting where everybody said, oh, there's one more meeting. We have no time for one meetings. And there's one, rec uh, one remark that's not the same like the Redaktions meeting, yeah? I want to hear it anymore. Redaktionsmeetings sind scheiße. Yeah? Okay? Because a Redaktionsmeeting means 
there is a leader and he tells everybody what to do. That's not like, like a growth team really can work. Yeah? So the idea of a weekly meeting is there are some rules. They are really important because it's not a normal, not a, not a usual meeting. Rule number one, it's always at the, at the same time. Maybe Tuesday at 9.30 or whatever fits, but it's always at the same time. That's really important because you don't want to negotiate before or that the people are sending WhatsApp or whatever, or today it's not at 9.30 because I have a call or whatever. It's always at the same time. And at it's always at the same place. So, so choose a place which is always available. So not here in the Stabplatz coffee machine area. So take a place anywhere where you know in 99% of the cases it's always available. Because you don't want the people to discuss before. It is always at the same time. It sounds so stupid, but believe in me, it works. Yeah? And then there's a time box. Everybody, so maybe it's six people, everybody has two minutes. Not one minute, not three minutes, not two minutes and five seconds. Everybody has two minutes to send a message, yeah, to send, to say something. So that means you need a small timer thing in the best way. <laughs> and it, it makes a noise after two minutes and then everything stops. And when there's a boss in the meeting, how many minutes does he have or she? Two minutes. That's really important. They hate it. But it works. That's rule number one. Always the same time, always the same place, and there is a time box for everybody. Rule number two, there are only three questions to answer from every person. First one, what was my work in the last period? Maybe you do a weekly and say, okay, last week I did this. I achieved this, whatever it is. Question number two, what will I do Next period, next week. I'm planning to do this, this, and this. And then number three, is there something most important, always forgotten? Where are my problems? What could happen that I could, couldn't achieve this goal or finish this task or end this campaign? I need you. That comes out in this meeting. I need your help. Because you have to give me the account, the login. So stupid ideas, always. Yeah? These three questions. Not more, not less. Okay? And then, rule number three. There are no discussions. Two minutes multiplied with six people are 12 minutes, right? Not 30 minutes. It's just 12 minutes. There is no discussion. If you say something, I want to say something to or to answer. I can get it in my mind, and after the, the weekly meeting, I go to you and say, okay, let's talk about this, but not in the meeting. Do you know this? So that's gross hack, stupid gross hack, number one. Please start at least a weekly meeting, because the synchronization between teams and prog processes and everything else is so important, and it lacks always. Not even in corporates or whatever, it lacks always. In every startup here at Startplatz, this is a huge problem. They don't talk to each other. Really. Believe in me. Okay? So, whew, top five gross eggs. Just to repeat. And then we can drink beer. Anyway. Number one. What the customer needs. Check out your value proposition and put it on your website. Number two. Yeah? Don't sell too early. Start grabbing the email addresses. Because email marketing still works. <laughs> Number three, yeah. tools, tools, tools. You have to be tools addicted. We love tools to check out the tools. Unfortunately, we love changing tools. And that's really, really cost intensive. But I love changing tools. Yeah. Number four, be authentic, tell the story. And that's not the story storytelling thing. Think about your personal story. Yeah, and the last thing, start to synchronize your work. Synchronize your work, your tasks, and everything you do with your team, with your bosses. 
and start them, the bosses, start them to talk what they do and not to control people. It's just to control the progress. Yeah. So do we want one more? One last thing? <laughs> okay. That's my gross hacking thing. So you started in the introduction with, he's the only guy who still says gross hacking. I said he's the only guy who, who I would s s use the word growth hacking for because I detest it usually so much, but you deserve it. Okay. So growth hacking. And there are a lot of corporates when they come with growth hacking, oh, I have no idea what it is. I think there is a sec security lag or, or whatever. And uh, my story is five or six years ago, I read a TechCrunch article about growth hacking. And then I said, okay, I did so many things campaigns, products, technology, and everything. And I think growth hacking is exactly exactly what I'm doing. Executing ideas, 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 and execute them, and talk to the customers, and sales, and everything what, what belongs together. Yeah. And then I started last year with the boot camps. And really, that was my boot camp, Facebook, stupid Facebook ad I did with uh, Keynote, as you can see. Yeah. So there's improvement. But what I did, I stood up at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning and I drove to Munich, I drove to Hamburg, to whatever, to do a boot camp. And I think there are a lot of people who would say, oh, that's not, the, and what, that was not for revenue, yeah? There were maybe 15 people paying some not too expensive tickets. I did it just for branding. I want to, to, to grow the spirit because I know the biggest problem is the hacking part, not the growth part. If you start hacking and executing your ideas, the growth comes by yourself by itself. If your idea is good, that's really my w what is what is in for me. Yeah, I wrote a book and everything because that's just idea. Everybody of you maybe want to write a book, but you have to do it. And then I can say what what is what is in for to write a, a book by Springer Verlag. Yeah, it's really great for my trust, but it had nothing to do with growth hacking. I have no idea how many books are sold. I'm not even able to, 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 to adapt my Amazon page because it comes out of, a, of the biggest Amazon automation script from the Springer Verlag. Yeah? It's still the same like one and a half years ago. I can't adapt it. And for a marketing guy, it's a really challenge. But it works. The book works for me. Yeah? So go for it. If you find your niche, and if you have your niche or your product or your business, and then go for it. Go for it. And don't think so much about other people, hear about your customers or what others say, but take your own decision. Take it with you in your idea column for Trello or whatever, and then take your time, think about it, if you want to execute it or not. So that was the story for Germany. That was last year, 2017 was my Germany to spread the growth hacking spirit in Germany. And I said, okay, what can I do to do it in Europe? Because the US is really big. Everybody's talking about growth hacking. I think in Germany, not that much. I had my boot camp in January in Vienna. That was awesome. Everybody in Vienna is talking about growth hacking. We should do a meetup there because it's awesome. Even more than, and they say, oh, we are not that good in Austria like Germany. I think you are much more in front than we are, yeah? So then my, what was my idea? I have to do conference. Yeah, for branding, it's just branding, not for money, it's just for branding. I have to do conference because I want to claim the growth hacking keyword with us, with our community. And I want to do conference. But I'm not the conference guy, I hate conferences, and that's the reason why I do an online conference. Yeah, and it's called Growth Europe, and there are free tickets, and I want to join you the growth, on growseurope.com, the, the conference taking part in May. We have awesome speakers like Ben, and until now, 14 or 15 more. At least there will be 25 speakers, international speakers. We have people from US. Today we closed uh, a deal with a guy from Russia, from, from, from Slovenia, from everywhere. And please come to growseurope.com and start sharing the growth hacking spirit. And I even more in the hacking thing than in the growth thing because it's really, really important. Yeah, That was the last thing. If you find your niche, keep on going. That's really important. Most of the startups here in the accelerator programs 
I know you're an Eon as well. They're just starting and then because they don't don't want it. Yeah? That's really important. If you want to learn more about growth hacking, just go to growthhackingacademy.de slash surprise. You find an ebook and everything else. I don't want to do so much marketing. You find the slides here. Yep. Get .piratskills.com slash process. And I would say that's it for today. <coughs> Sorry if you expected the fucking growth hacks, the list of growth hacks, but I would recommend to, to go to growthhackers.com. You find everything there. And today, again, take your ideas, but ideas are nothing. You have to execute them. I Immediately. Start tomorrow, take the best three things you heard today, and please execute them. And then write us an email where you say, okay, I did one. I'm really proud every time in a boot camp or whatever when the people say, there was just one thing I executed. Because that's it. That's a real hacking spirit. Okay? Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> so, wonderful. Um, do you have one more thing? It looks like that, like there's the green button. Did you do the green button oh. test? Oh, there was a joke. I Shit. My own joke. <laughs> what, I you? The green so I hope it converts much better, like growthhackingacademy.de slash surprise. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the hack. That's the real hack. That was a real hack. All right, all right. So uh, I think that was that was better than growth is the process. Uh, so we had Hendrik's top five actually uh, going on. So uh, if you if you want to get the, the video and the, the slides and everything, you can uh, sign up on PirateSkills.com for free. There's a free course area insights and all the past events and the videos and the handouts and the slides are available for free download there. So just go to PirateSkills.com uh, to check that stuff out. As you said, if you want to implement some of your stuff and tell your success story, please get in touch with me. Or if you want to talk, if you have a topic uh, you want to talk about, I would love to hear your, your stuff here at the meetup next time. And uh, yeah, you can get in touch with me or Hendrik about any questions you might have about this stuff. We just love to go to lunch with people and uh, to discuss their thing. Yeah. All right, so um, if you have any feedback, uh, there is uh, no feedback board here, so we have this uh, bit.ly slash live link. Uh, you get it also in the email as a follow-up of this, like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I would really appreciate your feedback. You can also vote for the next upcoming topics, yeah, and what speakers you would like to hear, and I would really appreciate your feedback there. If you have some uh, personal feedback or something, just come up to me, uh, we grab a beer together and, and let's talk. That would be wonderful. Um, so next time is, is one you're going to love, I think. Um, it's about B2B uh, leads with LinkedIn. Yeah, um, I found a, um, a girl, a woman, um, that does this for a pretty high-end IT uh, company that needs to sell high tickets. Uh, the company is called uh, Linux, um, Linux, and they are from Bonn. And she generates two to three hundred qualified B two B leads on LinkedIn organically, yeah, every week, yeah, uh, for high end IT consulting. She she talked to me about um, the differences between like offering people a white paper versus a poster, yeah. Like, who would think that a white paper is better? an ebook thing or a poster is better yeah so a poster is much less effort and it converts 80 percent of the leads she generates yeah she's going to share that stuff what works what doesn't work uh, how she cooperates with a linkedin group admins uh, the software to tools she uses to uh, analyze profiles and uh, do like semi-automatic uh, messaging to the people and follow up and i'm really excited uh to, to learn from her about B2B lead generation over there. Then uh, this is on March 7th, if you like to join us, yeah? If you are, if you recovered from Carnival, yeah? Uh, if you are hungry for this kind of stuff earlier, yeah? We have, uh, as we do it now this year for every month, 
we got a full day workshop going on. Yeah, at the end of the month, uh, it's the last day, it's uh, February 28th, uh, we're gonna sit together in that room over there for a whole day and um, build Facebook campaigns with you together, yeah? Then send those people to an A-B testable landing page, probably with Instapage or with MailChimp landing pages. We'll get the emails and send an automated series of emails. I want to do this with a couple of uh, like six uh, projects um, that that come join uh, that come there and actually go out with running campaigns, a running landing page, uh, a working uh, Mailchimp account that is perfectly set up and that has one or two emails in a marketing in an email marketing series. So if you don't have this funnel yet up and running, I I still have to find the project where this failed. Yeah, this funnel. This is the ultimate learning thing. Even if you're just thinking about validating your idea, we used to do just that, just with AdWords. So you can change that funnel later if you prefer another uh, channel or if you want to do just organic. But you need a place for people to go. But this is also exchangeable, for example, for Messenger or an app or whatever. Emails is hardly changeable, but could also go to Messengers. But revenue remains the same. And this is what, uh, what you talked about, like being patient about not selling too early. First giving people something in exchange for, for trust building mechanism, yeah? We're gonna build that in, in one day. If you use the code, I think it's Pirate Skills Live, I'm gonna send it to you later. It's gonna be 250 for the whole day for one team, yeah? I would love to see you guys there and yeah, join us for a beer. Say, let's say goodnight, bye bye. Yeah, shall we shall we take a picture together? Yeah. yeah. One moment, let me let me finish off the stream. Bye bye, dear stream people. Um I don't know how to turn off the stream like that.